What's good? It's your boys are all right. Reserve. Now, I came back because we got to talk about something important. Of course, uh, my other two videos had importance to them, but I always try to deliver something that's critical thinking level material. And I have other commenter uh, questions I'm going to get into as of tomorrow. I'm going to try and do as many as I can, actually. But starting this off, you already know. Hit that cash app, dollar sign, capital T-H-E, capital C-Z-A-R-R, -R, or slide through to paypal.me, backslash, the czar, the same thing, capital T-H-E, capital C-Z-A-R-R, -R, or hit the description for the GoFundMe. Now what we're going to talk about is work our way down to seven placements, but we're going to do them as the situations occur, which means I really have to catch up. We're going to start with bail. Now, we also know that at the beginning of the case, as it turned out, Bell was denied for Michael Boatwright and was set to limits that were not feasible to the other suspects while they were on a manhunt for the missing two people known as Trayvon Newsom. And we also had Diedrich, uh, D. Williams in custody, Michael Boatwright in custody, but Robert Allen was also looked for. Uh, they had found one man in Atlanta, Georgia, and allegedly found another up near New York. Now, even as we're looking at the bail bond era and how that works, it's not usual for a bond to be set to limits that are unfeasible unless evidence hadn't been found yet. And that was the case. We know evidence wasn't found yet and that there was an all out situation where they were actually trying to detail who they thought to be responsible for what. And now, being that we understand that, you can understand the fact that these men weren't able to see their families for a long time. They're homesick. They're feeling some sort of way. That's part of the game. That's part of how they put things together to capture people and hold you dead to rights to a situation to get you to speak up in times when you may not have to. We see this many different cases. We see people held down in many ways because of this very factor. Well, now, and we're not going to talk about the second and third in detail yet. But here's how we're going to relate the first. Something very interesting has happened at the third level. We had Robert Allen's lawyer not only reach out, but reach out in order to try to, let's say, get bond at the third stage. That's something that's not normally seen. And the reason they were doing this was to put pressure on prosecution. So that is why prosecution literally started looking for more evidence because they weren't going to fall to that. They weren't going to allow that situation to in return to cause them to feel some type of way or to be unable to develop a case. That was a smart reply by them. They made sure that regardless of what the situation was, regardless of what was going on, they were not going to allow these individuals to slide off on some means of uh, basically blowing trial in a sense of them getting through without having to stand uh, for the evidence that they do have. So that's why prosecution literally reached out and said, we need some type of evidence. And the evidence we want to require from these men is DNA. That might have been the answer to these guys trying to get bond and bail and say, look, we want this trial over with because we don't think they have the proper information to even hold us to it. That's a normal occurrence, actually. That's actually more normal than anything for them to respond in an aggressive way when, you know, these guys are saying, look, where's the evidence? So that's the whole idea of it. Remember, a bill of information has to be very detailed because when the pre-motion trials come out, that's when the lawyers step up that's defending someone. And they're like, look, I need to get past the trial because of this. These factors are a name. You don't have this. You don't have that. We're literally good to go. So that's sort of their response to that. The question is, what made them so sure to ask for this? See, this is a very abnormal thing to ask for at the third stage, being that we know evidence is usually produced in a way where you can't even ask for these type of things. That's what I'm saying. So the title of this is DJ D. Williams and Robert Allen, because these two men's lawyer were smart and they put pressure on prosecution. It's very rare to see a lawyer put pressure on prosecution the way they did it. It is a very abnormal thing. But as we know, there was a grounds behind it because now they're requesting DNA. Did the lawyers know there were no DNA evidence? Did Was there some type of factor that was seen around or behind the scenes that we didn't know about? That's very important because you can, we can, I can't think of 
many cases or even research cases, let alone in Florida, where they've done this so readily. And not only that, now we see that not only is Diedrich's lawyer, Diedrich and Robert Allen have a defense where they're asking for this bond or some sort of, let's say, uh, accommodation for them in this situation. But literally, they're putting up a defense where Diedrich's asking for a private investigator. Do you think that he's doing that because the way law is investigating it and he feels unjust? We don't know the details around that, but what we do see is a definitive, definitive purpose behind what they're doing. Whether or not they have both have defense, I don't know. I know Robert Allen does. I know Diedrich D. Williams, shout to the peaceful attorney, did. But that that guy actually bumped out. And I'm not going to name his name because he slid out the case. But one thing I don't think was actually talked about in it at the same time was the fact that him asking for this justification he had one of the best lawyers in florida um that's what the peaceful attorney let me know and i did research and he was he was an acclaimed lawyer in florida so do you think he was asked to not take it up because they had some sort of fear of him taking on the case or he didn't want the notoriety remember the very beginning that's why i always tell you guys to watch the series all the way through that was something i named if a lawyer doesn't want the notoriety or the acclaim or to have his face out there listening to a case, he may ask to be off a case or he may leave a case because the money's not worth the attention that he's getting for defending certain people. This is a normal occurrence, believe it or not. It's just that when a case isn't on a mainstream scale as this case is, we don't see it. But that's what I'm saying. There's many different factors that played a part into how investigations go. Now, looking forward, do you think at the fourth pretrial motion, that this topic will come up again about a bond, a bail, these guys saying lack of evidence, let us off. Is this going to be a situation? Because if they are let off at that point, they cannot be double tried for this off of the evidence that is presented. That is why prosecution must take their time and, and thumb through things and see if it actually fits. But at the same token, the way these lawyers are working is very aggressive and very effective. Honestly, the free lawyer for Michael Boatwright has been more effective than I've seen a free lawyer for anyone. And that's why I'm saying this is nothing to play with. These guys are definitely coming for freedom. And that's my point. That's something that has to be kept in mind. And that's why I'm saying if there's no residue, if they can fight against the DNA evidence because of how the evidence was found, where the evidence was found, what the evidence is, they can possibly argue themselves out of the situation because of the grounds it stands out now and that's something people got to keep in mind and that's a very impressive feat if these lawyers any lawyer that is able to make this occur becomes a legend amongst other lawyers because i've never heard of a pretrial motion and a case this large being argued away so readily and they're already making moves that i've never seen done before that definitely changes the game and changes everything they have that builds into, let's say, a supplemental defense that is just flawless. I don't see a flaw in any defense of these men, and I don't see no backing down by the investigators. See this as a title fight. Right now, they're at a title fight for their freedom because they're saying, do you really have the evidence you claim to have? And when stuff like this is happening, that's when a case gets good. In a sense, not that this is a good situation, but that's when a case really steps his game up. That's why I said when the pre-motion trial starts, it's going to be war. It's going to be war between these two parties, and it's going to be an all-out war. It's not going to be some simple battle. It's not about who wins the battles. Yes, one of them lost their lost bond. Yes, um, one of them had something denied. But at the same time, pre-trial motions, that's where it's all about. That's where that's when everything is supposed to turn up. That's when you're going to see the case go to the very That's a very important part, and I think that's going to be something essential to this case that we're looking at as is. Especially when we see the many different bills coming up, how how different situations and strategies are being utilized. Are we going to see investigators get involved? Now here's the trump card for investigators. We have not seen any type of forensic step up so usually a forensics person gets involved and says no 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 on the scene we found this we have not seen that yet 
So what I'm saying is that it's very important to note that this is a situation where forensics has literally stepped their game up and said, look, things are going to be this way. We're going to fight against everything that's coming up and we're going to see where you guys land. So I'm excited to see how the case goes. But as far as bond and bail, we've seen that denied. We've seen it brought up. But at the same time, at the third step, a lawyer has utilized it to fight back. Are we going to see them get what they're looking for or is the evidence going to come through conclusive? We'll know when circumstantial figures and types of evidence are produced or direct evidence. So it literally lies on the investigator's shoulders. But you know how I rock. You know how this is going to go. You know how I do it. Commenters, questions up next. Tomorrow we're going to really turn up and you know what it is. All rights reserved.